Today's episode of Ham Radio 2.0 is brought to you by Gifts for Hams. Find their website at www.gifts4hams.com. Get your call sign or club logo engraved on virtually anything you want. Specializing in ham radio related gift ideas, Gifts for Hams is your one stop shop for lighted call sign displays, coffee mugs, coasters, drinking glasses, smartphone cases, and so much, much more. Laser engraving and etching to show off your ham radio call sign or club. Shop gifts4hams.com and tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. This is Jerry, KG5JBC, and I'd like to invite you to join our DMR net on the Brandmeister Network, Talk Group 3148, on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. This net is sponsored by the Ham Radio 2.0 video podcast on livefromthehamshack.tv. Ham Radio 2.0, episode 74. Merry Christmas. If that offends you, then you can uh, go to another channel and watch some other kind of series. But, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, seasons, greetings, and happy holidays also. So I think I covered everything there, or at least in this area. So welcome to Ham Radio 2.0, live from the Ham Shack. My name's Jason. I am Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo. This episode will air on December 26th, Monday. Trying to get all my episodes aired on Mondays now. I was late a couple weeks ago because I came home from a Christmas party on Monday and I found that one of my dogs had passed away. So my 10-year, 11-year companion, my border collie named Alaska, she died on the 13th, Monday the, no, Monday the 12th, Monday, December 12th. So she was a good dog. She, um, we had her for about 11 years. She was one of those kind of standoffish dogs, but she was a good dog. She, uh, (laughs) she'd been with us for a while. So I was, I was pretty sad about that on that Monday. So I didn't get my video posted till the next day, but not trying to bum anyone out. As you saw, I have got, I've got, um, uh, expenditures. This is a this is a um, this is a promotion for um, how to generate revenue for my video series. This is one way. So you can see I've got the Brandmeister DMR T-shirts here, and and the reason I showed the Brandmeister first is because this episode is going to be on how to program your how how to program your code plug for a hotspot. Yes, how to program thought I got that backwards. I, I, I thought I said how to program your hotspot for a code plug, but that's wrong. How to program your code plug for a hotspot. And then this is just uh, DMR, Digital Mobile Radio Association. And it's got the black and blue. Somebody online today says, that looks like a Back the Blue t-shirt. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? Good. I wasn't really going for that, but I like the, co- the way the colors turned out. Honestly, and I'm not a football fan. Anybody who knows me knows I'm not a football fan. But I saw some Dallas Cowboys jerseys about a month ago that were black with the Cowboys logo in a very dark blue. And I thought, you know what? If I was a Cowboys fan, that would be cool. I really, I really kind of like that. Uh, I should say, I'm not a football fan. I don't have anything against the Cowboys specifically. But I just don't care about football. I'm like, what else you got? So... Uh, that's me. <laughs> uh, this episode, episode 74, how to program your code plug for a DMR hotspot. Now, I realized I just showed you the t-shirts and then I put them down and didn't say anything else about them. These are for sale on grapevineamateurradio.com and all of the t-shirts, and there's this is two examples of about eight different t-shirts I have up there. And all of the t-shirt sales go to help my Ham Radio 2.0 video series. So, um, I'm working on maybe some kind of shopping cart to put on livefromthehamshack.tv or my new URL, which I'm using now, hamradio2.com. So go to hamradio2.com. You can see all my episodes and all my YouTube videos are linked from there. Subscribe to me on YouTube. 
but go check out the website as well because there's a better listing of uh well not a better listing but there's there's a more detailed description in each episode posting about what I think about the episode and how I came to want to record one of those and that kind of good stuff anyway but I'm 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 looking at options for a shopping cart actually on hamradio2.com but until such time as I find that my t-shirts that are for sale on grapevineamateurradio.com those t-shirt sales go to promote this video series so get that out of the way okay um how do so this question gets asked quite a bit um, people will buy a, a hotspot for DMR. Now, you've got DVAPs and DV Voice, I think, um, for D-Star. And you've got some of these hotspots that will do all three, D-Star, DMR, and Fusion. I've not, I'm not big into D-Star. I've never used D-Star much. Um, I'm going to start learning some D-Star and do some videos on D-Star. I'm interested in it. I just never have taken the time to actually do it. There's not, there's a few D-Star repeaters around here, but not a lot of D-Star repeaters around here. Uh, there's a lot of Fusion repeaters around here, but most of them don't have internet access, and they don't even use them on digital most of the time. In Dallas-Fort Worth, at the time of this video recording, there are only two repeaters in the Metroplex that are full-time 100% digital for Yezu System Fusion. There's 11 that are DMR. So, um, those DMR repeaters are hooked into the DMR Mark network, but they do, uh, about half of them probably have access to the Texas 3148 talk group on Brandmeister as well. Uh, so, you know. Anyway, so I get asked this question a lot. Uh, this, ask, this question is posted on the Facebook group quite regularly. In fact, I'm pretty much recording this episode for the Brandmeister TG3148 Facebook group. If you're not a member of that Facebook group and you're interested in anything with Brandmeister, whether you're interested in talking on the Texas 3148 talk group or not, go out to Facebook, search Facebook groups for Brandmeister TG, TG like talk group, Tango Golf 3148. They hold a net at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time every Tuesday. And they share a lot of information on that Facebook group about um, just how to do anything with DMR, hotspots, Brandmeister repeaters, all this kind of good stuff. So, but this question, you know, there's new new people joining all the time, new people trying to program radios all the time, and this question gets gets asked fairly regularly about, well, how do I program my hotspot? Or I'm sorry, how do I program my code plug for my MD380 or my Kinect Systems radio or even a Motorola radio? How do I program a code plug to make it connect to a hotspot? So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Um, I will say up front that all of the hotspots that I'm aware of, and this question gets, gets asked a lot too, um, all of the hotspots that I'm aware of, with the exception of the DV4 Mini stick. The DV4 Mini is unique because it's just a USB stick that plugs into the side of your laptop or your tablet. And then you run software on your laptop that controls which talk groups you talk to. So if you want to change channels using a DV4 Mini, you change it in the software on the laptop. You always key up talk group, uh, time slot 2, talk group number... Time slot 2 talk group number 9 to connect into DV4 Mini, and then you change talk groups on the DV4 Mini. With the exception of that one hotspot, all of the other hotspots, you program the, radio, the uh, channels into your radio, and you change channels on the radio. You change talk groups by turning the knob on the top of the radio. Right there. Turn the knob on top of the radio, just like you would for um, any other just like you would for talking into a repeater. So you could program two talk groups, two channels on your radio. You can program 100 talk groups for 100 channels on your radio. You have to split them up into zones for most of these radios, especially the ME380, but it's all done. It's all selectable via the radio code plug and not the software for the Shark RF, uh, Shark RF open spot, 
for the MMDVM Raspberry Pi with the DV Mega, for the Blue Stack with the DV Mega, for the, um, there's one out there called a, um, I can't remember what that one is called right now. There's a DV something. It's DV Digital Voice. They all have DV in the name. There's a, uh, there's a company out there that builds a, a, an all-inclusive case. Not the, not the Shark RF, but there's another one. There's a, there's a company that builds one with a screen on it and an antenna on the back of it. And they're kind of pricey. Um, they build an APRS, all-inclusive APRS station as well. And just program it up with your own call sign and info. Put it in your truck and leave it alone. you got to power it. It's got a battery, but you got to power it. And... Um, I wish I could remember the name of that, but I'll find it and I'll, I'll let you guys know later. But uh, anyway, so all of these um, hotspots that I just named are programmed with code plugs in the radio to change channels on the radio when you want to change talk groups. So let's take a look. I'm going to show you guys the MD380 software because that's the most popular radio out there. I'm also going to hop back and forth to the CS Connect System CS800 software because I think that's probably the most popular mobile radio at this point in time. And um, we're going to look and I'm going to show you guys just how to do this. And it's not... Most of you are overthinking it. It's not complicated. Basically, all you do is you program it like you would a repeater. You think of your hotspot as a repeater. Think of it as a simplex repeater. You don't even need two frequencies. You just need one. So think of it that way. So let's take a look at the software. I'll show you guys how to do this. Uh, 73, thank you for watching. Again, subscribe to me on YouTube. Go check out the website, hamradio2.com. You can see all my videos. You can see the t-shirts. And um, there's a support link on the right-hand side of the page. This is my right. This is your... Looks like it's your left. This is my right. <laughs> uh, there's a support link on the side of the page where you can make PayPal donations to me also. So I'm still getting a few of those here and there. But it costs money to do this series, and it costs money to make these videos with the lights and the cameras and all this other good stuff. So um, anyway, that's my spiel. Merry Christmas, folks. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy the video. This is the MD390, MD380-390 software, as what we talked about earlier. I'll go ahead and open up the Connect System software. And let's see if I want to get uh, 750, 750, 800. I haven't updated my... <laughs> I need to update that. Oh, boy. Okay. That's, uh, nope. I've got newer software. Okay, I'm just going to do a new... Uh, yeah, that's good. Yes. So my software, my my um, installed version of the Connect System CPS is newer than the code plug. I haven't updated my CS800 radio in months. I don't honestly use the CS800 that much, and the reason for that is because I don't currently have an antenna in the ham shack dedicated for DMR. I need to. I need to have one dedicated for DMR. I've got one on the truck dedicated for DMR. And I've got a portable backyard repeater here, so I just usually use my HT when I'm at home and don't have a need for a mobile radio or a base station radio when I am in the shack. So we're going to set up here, and uh, I'm going to set this, and go ahead and uh, I think I'm actually going to open the software here. Um... To, yeah, right here. Okay, so I'm going to open this uh, channel. Uh, and we're going to go... There we go. Okay, so this is something that I already made that I have plugged into my current MD390 code plug for the Shark OF's open spot. So that's why I've got open spot right here um, in... Uh, this part of the this part of the name you can name the channel whatever the heck you want to it doesn't really matter I've got Texas statewide open spot so open spot is my quote-unquote repeater it's my hotspot so 
I said earlier in the video that you should just think of your hotspot as an as a repeater. And that's true. You should think of your hotspot as a repeater, but a simplex repeater. Okay. So you want uh, digital 12 and a half kilohertz like normal. Uh, set the timeout timer for whatever in the world you want. I shoot. I usually choose 165 to 180 for mine. You can set it for whatever you want. I always put my open my hotspot power default setting on low, because typically speaking, if I'm talking into my MD390 and I'm talking in an open spot, I'm inside the house and so is the open spot, and I've had zero issues getting into the open spot from one watt output on the MD390 from anywhere in my house. No issues whatsoever. So, um, you can change that if you want to, if you've got a situation where you're putting an open spot on the bottom floor of your house and you've got a five-story house or something or you got just you want to go out in the yard and take it out in the field or something um, you can you can always change that but I keep mine on low that's just what I do channel name whatever the heck you want frequency transmit and receive this is the important part right here these need to be the same and they need to match you can see where I was in that, my last video here we're going to open up my actually I don't I don't have my open spot connected right now you know what so um, in the open spot software you set your frequency and uh, I did go back and watch my episode 60 no 65 somewhere in <laughs> I can't remember my own episodes hold on I'll tell you what it is uh, let's see so if you go back and watch the episode where I show you how to go into the open spot and um, set set it up, get it to um, it's uh, on the next page here. Show you, I take you through all the admin screens and show you what to do to get the open spot up and running. So. It's going to be 60, yeah, 65, that's right, right here. So go watch episode 65 if you want to know how to set up an open spot. And you're going to set the open spot frequencies and this frequency the same. Okay, so, and they're the same frequency. So you can turn on talk around, you can turn it off, talk, turn it on, it doesn't matter. Your transmit, receive frequencies are the same. So admit criteria is usually always for a simplex frequency. Your contact is going to be the same contact that you would use for a repeater. So you want Texas. Texas is 3148. Uh, Arkansas is 3105. And I just have these memorized. Uh, TAC 310 is, of course, 310. Um, I've got every state in my code plug here. So Florida is 3112. Uh, Iowa's 3119. I've seen some 3119 guys on there. Uh, let's see. Nebraska, 3131. Talked to a bunch of those guys. Um, Oklahoma is uh, 3140. They recently... Uh, whoops, that I didn't change that. 3140. They recently put most of their Brandmeister repeaters on... Or on most of their DMR repeaters on Brandmeister. So you can now use your hotspot to talk to all the repeaters in Oklahoma. Or most of them anyway. And then Texas is 3148. And this is where, when I post this video, it'll be on the Facebook group, uh, Texas Talk Group 3148. I mentioned that earlier. Let me show you that group here, the Brandmeister Talk Group that I spend most of my time in. Which is right here. It's just called Brandmeister Talk Group 3148. So uh, it's got just over a thousand members. And um, you can see, you can get lots of help for lots of information here. Um, and when this video airs, uh, when I put it up on my website, I'll put a link to it in this, in this uh, Facebook group. But... So when you're choosing your contact name, it's the same as, as using a repeater. If you're used to using repeaters, then 
one of the statewide talk groups, uh, one of the tactical talk groups, um, what they call USA and Brandmeister is uh, called DCI Bridge in in uh, DMR Mark. So I've got all mine named for DCI Bridge because I've been on DMR Mark a lot longer than Brandmeister has even existed in the United States. Uh, that's talk group 3100. So when Brandmeister guys talk about USA or talk group 3100, um, you can those are cross-connected between DMR Mark and Brandmeister also. But and then you always want to put your color code as <clears throat> excuse me you always want to put your color code as one and your repeater slot as two. That's it really, and then just save the uh, channel. Or once you've got the channel configured, save your code plug. So what you want just make sure it's digital. Set your channel name to whatever you want. Set your repeat set your frequency to match what is in your open spot or your blue stack or your MMDVM or whatever hotspot you're using. Set it as a simplex frequency. Make sure your contact name is your um talk group. Your color code is one and your repeater slot is two. Save that, turn your radio on, or shoot it in the radio. Turn the radio on, dial over to this channel, and you'll be able to talk on the Brandmeister talk group through your hotspot assuming that all this information is correct and matches what's in your hotspot. Now, if we go over here, basically the same thing. We want this, that, and I want the same there. I'm going to change, color code's already one, that's fine. I'm going to change time slot to two. I don't have any contacts. This is a fresh code plug, so let me go create a contact real quick. right there and I'm just gonna say Texas and I'm gonna change it to 3148 and then I'm gonna go back to my channel actually I can go back up here to this tab and say Texas OS for open spot and since this is the only one in here, it defaulted to Texas. Power level, I would turn that. I would definitely, if you're going to use a mobile into your hotspot, I would definitely turn that down to low. Um, again, unless you're a long way away from it, the hotspot's only, the open spot's only about 20 milliwatts. So, unless you're a really long way away from it, it may not be, get back to you if you're that far away from it anyway. So, right there. Power level, admit criteria, yes. So I've got my receive and my transmit frequency is the same. My contact set. My color code is one. My time slot, repeater slot is two. My name set, shoot that into the radio, you'll be able to talk in your open spot. So that is a simple, quick, easy explanation on how to program your code plug to talk into your hotspot. Well, Merry Christmas, guys. That is my gift to you, how to program your hotspot, how to program your code plug to use your radio with a hotspot. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for watching. Uh, most of you guys are really kind of, well, most of the people I've talked to who hit me up and they, they ask me, how do you program... I don't understand how to set up my MB380 or whatever radio you're using for to talk in a hotspot, talking to a hotspot. You're overthinking it. It's not. It's not. It's not complicated as we just saw. Set it up the same way you would set it up to a repeater, except use simplex settings. So use the same frequency for both transmit and receive. I was down in the 430s because most of the repeaters and most of the 440 repeaters in my area, well, pretty much all of them. Um, are uh, between 440, 440.something and 444.9, and then they're a positive 5 megahertz offset. So some areas have a negative 5 megahertz offset. Um, there may be some random repeaters that are down around the 438, 439 range, but I've spoken to the Texas VHF FM Society. They're the ones who do the repeater coordinations for Texas, and they say they won't coordinate a repeater below 440.0. Um, okay, that's fine. Whatever. Some people agree with that. Some people don't. Uh, I'm not, I don't 
for the purpose of this video, I don't really care one way or the other. Um, and of course, you can run as many non-coordinated repeaters as you want to. There's nothing that says you have to coordinate your repeater. Um, you just don't want to interfere with another amateur operator's repeater. That's the, really the only thing. I think that thing's supposed to be more over here. Anyway. <laughs> um, so I run mine down around the 430 range because, you know, I'm only pumping out about a watt anyway. And, um, you know, it's actually the hot spot's like, John Micklor did a thing on the open spot just a few days ago that I saw, and I thought he said, unless I misread that, he said it was outputting 20 milliwatts. I thought it was like 200 milliwatts. So I don't know if he typoed it or if I had it wrong. I don't know. Anyway, it's far less than one watt. Uh, the hot spot itself is putting out. So turn your radio down on low. If you're using the hot spot in your own home, unless you have a 10 or 12,000 square foot home, um... If you're using it outdoors, you know, great. In fact, it's got a standard SMA female connector on the back of the hotspot. If you're using it outdoors, put it on an external antenna. I've been wanting to do that on mine anyway and see how far I could get in the in the driving around the neighborhood or something. It might be kind of cool. But uh, as I said, you're overthinking it. Uh, just set it up as a repeat as a simplex repeater with the same frequency for transmit and receive. Always use color code one, always use time slot two, and then use the talk group number for whatever talk group you want to talk into. So, 73 guys, hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, next week, I will have um, Welcome to 2017, which should premiere on January 2nd, Monday, January 2nd. And I'm going to give uh, some visions of some ideas and some visions of what I have in store for the show for the next year. 73 guys, everyone have a good holiday.